As soon as you put in a newly formatted memory card into your Sony camera, say for example if you've wiped out all of the files on your computer or put in just a completely brand new drive, a uh, compact flash card, it will give you this window right here and it says image database file error recover sounds scary but it's really not basically what it's going to do is it's going to create three very confusing folders which are called dcim mp underscore root and private makes absolutely no sense but i'll go into great detail and explain to you what it's going to do so i'll go ahead and hit enter and then it'll say, please wait, and then now it's complete. So what it's basically done is it's now made the camera ready for shooting stills or uh, MOV files or uh, high definition video. So let's go to the menu down here to file format. And right now you'll see that it's selected as AVCHD, which is high def. It's MP4, which is a compressed file format for uploading to say YouTube or uh, something that's not going to be going to high def. Now under AVCHD, it'll make a completely different type of file. This is called an AVCHD file. AVCHD is a 1080 resolution high def file, but the way that it's put together is so confusing and really inaccessible that I've got to explain exactly how to work with these files. So. In this example here, I've just inserted my SD card, which is, it, it says no name. And when I put that card into my Sony, it said image database not found. Would you like to cr create one? And so what I do is when I say, okay, what the Sony camera does is it creates three different folders. One is called DCIM. The second one is called MP root, and the third one is called private. Now these are different folders that hold different things. They're terribly mis misnamed. The first one, DCIM, should be called stills. And so just in your mind, just think that whenever you take stills on your camera, they will be stored in the DCIM folder. MP root is for your MPEG or MP4 lower resolution video recordings those will all be stored inside an mp root folder this should be called low res video and then inside there you'll see that there's different clips mp uh, mp4 clips and each clip is individually named and recorded so what you can do is you can say you know what i didn't like that first one because it was kind of dumb so i'm just going to go ahead you know it was really long and i didn't like it so i'm going to delete that and i'm going to copy only this folder this file here which i like better you can't do that in the avchd this third folder which is called private by some mysterious nomenclature uh as if the other ones aren't private or more private than this one. I don't know, for some reason it's, it's suggesting that high resolution is private, whereas the lower resolution or your stills are not private. I don't know why they're called private. I wanna, I wanna be very angry at the person who came up with this naming system. But inside this private, to make it even more confusing, is a single folder called AVCHD, and it says AVCHD content. Inside this AVCHD file, a single file, contains multiple high definition clips. So you can't discard one single clip individually. If I hit the delete button right now, nothing happens. I can't drag anything to the trash can. I can't copy any of these folders onto my desktop. In fact, I really can't do anything with an AVCHD folder except for open the box which we'll call AVCHD, that contains these individual video clips inside it. Once I open that box, then I can maybe examine every single one of those clips, and then I can save them individually, at which time then I'll be able to do anything that I want with naming, copying, deleting, or whatever. That's very crazy. So under this scenario, just imagine that I've got AVCHD and I have three clips, two that I want to keep and one that I'd like to delete. Wouldn't that be just the most normal thing to say clip number one, I'm going to delete and copy the other two clips, but I cannot do that with an AVCHD. It's very, very ridiculous and cumbersome. And it takes a video like this to explain to you 
exactly what happened. The only thing that I can do now would I would have to click on each one that I want to be using and I'm going to then hit save. If I save any of these clips it takes a very very long time. It's going to export as this default name BDMV which makes absolutely no sense. We'll call it clip one and then if I want to save it it's very very slow to save and then you'll see that it takes quite a bit of time in fact it's it'll say here something like five minute four minutes to save this fairly short clip huge huge waste of time I could also export it as a 1080p 720p or whatever so if we export it to 1080p I'll call it clip one and then uh, it'll again say that it takes quite a bit of time to put it into a format six minutes here to put it into a format that you can individually edit or delete or duplicate on your computer's hard drive very cumbersome you can use my favorite editing software which is Adobe Premiere Pro Adobe Premiere Pro allows you to individually edit these clips within a AVCHD lockbox without having to export them directly. Now the Adobe Premiere Pro is Creative Cloud which is an instant download and what I like about it is if there's bug fixes it'll automatically update on your computer. If you need tech support you can instantly contact Adobe. There will be a chat window and that chat window will allow a technician to go straight into your computer and then show you while talking to you on the phone exactly what to do and what went wrong if you're having technical problems. They'll also record whatever issue you had for their database when they're updating their software and removing bug fixes so it's a beautiful beautiful system and it's inexpensive it's I don't know I'm paying like maybe thirty some odd dollars a month rather than paying say seven hundred dollars one shot deal for Apple's Final Cut Pro X Adobe Premiere is far far superior to Final Cut Pro and a lot of people I would say it's almost unanimous and a lot of people will say that that's the case between Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro X. So what happens here is you'll see in Premiere Pro, you remember that private folder that I was looking at before? I would have to then take that, open the AVCHD folder, export any of these files directly to do any work on them. What's neat about Premiere Pro is that I can get into this private file individually and I can look through them, scroll through them, or individually import them into my video editing project. This saves you an incredible amount of time. And if you're shooting AVCHD format, it's mandatory if you're going to be shooting high definition video in your Sony or Panasonic or Lumix or some of those other cameras. Uh, JVC also uses AVCHD. You would literally take an incredible amount of time and confusion before you're able to edit. Another thing that's really a pain with AVCHD format software is that you'll notice right here that it's just a single box and if I want to copy it then I've got to copy that AVCHD folder. Let's say for example that I took this no-name card out of my computer put it back into my camera and recorded additional clips this would now have five clips rather than three and but it would still be called AVCHD so would you name it AVCHD five clip would you name it this one AVCHD three clip another one AVCHD 17 clip and then once you get into 17 clips then you have to take each individual one open and save them if you're going to put them into a format that you can edit with your software or you would then reformat your card every single time you make a new clip so that you'll know that each of your AVCHD files has only one clip in it. I hope this helps. I think it will because it took me about a month to figure out how to deal with these AVCHD uh, files. Okay, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe.